enough for me. Praise the Lord. I greet you today in the name of the Lord Jesus. I thank God for another day. Amen. I, I thank God for all the leaders of the church, all, all of the laity, all of you out there and YouTube and Facebook Live. I just greet you this morning. You don't know how blessed I am to be here today. I am just grateful for another day. It is of the Lord's mercies that I'm not consumed. Did you hear what I'm saying? I said, it is of the Lord's mercies that I am not wiped out. It is of the Lord's mercies that I'm sitting here with you this morning. Great is his faithfulness. We take those things for granted. I'm not taking anything for granted this morning because it is mercy. It is his mercy that caused me to be here with you this morning. And I fully praise him and I fully worship him and I truly love him. And I praise him one more time. And if the devil is mad, I praise him one more time again. You don't have to beg me to praise him. You don't have to pull me to praise him. I know what the Lord has done for me. I know how he keeps me. I know that in every trial, he makes a way of escape. So I am, I am grateful. Did you hear what I'm saying? I said, I am grateful. My heart is full of gratitude this morning. Amen. I'm not sitting here as bishop, pastor. I'm sitting here as a recipient of the mercy of God, the recipient of the goodness of God. And I truly am grateful. I wish I had a thousand tongues to thank you. And even that would not be enough. So if that's where you feel, if you feel a little bit of that, just praise him and worship him this morning. I don't know what kind of week you had. I don't know what kind of night you had last night, but you're here. He's in your life. So I'm asking you to give him glory right now. Lay, take away all the distractions. Shake away. Shake off all of the things that come to make you forget him. To make you forget him. All the things that come to dumb down your consciousness of him. All the things that come to make you not remember that you should say even thank you. Oh, come on. You know how you eat up that food. And then after you eat and belch, you say, Oh, I didn't say my grace, but that's the trick of the enemy to keep you in a mode of ingratitude. Oh, but my God, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, I know that's old school, but you know, it works. And all that he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Thank God for bringing me through. Thank God for helping me. Thank God for holding me. Thank God for keeping my mind. Thank God. Oh my God, praise the Lord. I'm praising the Lord with all my heart this morning. If I didn't have to preach, I would really just carry on for hours. But I know I have to bring the word of the Lord. Thank you so much. I love you all and I thank God that he gave us this chance to worship together. I'm going to ask you to turn your Bibles very quickly to Psalm 18. And when I'm going to read from Psalm 18, the eighth, the 18th Psalm, verses um, 31 through 33. So I'm going to start at verse 31, and I'm going to end at 33, which is where the sermon is coming from. It's coming from verse 33, but I thought if I just read from verse 31 to 33, that would just be okay. Amen. If you have your Bibles, just turn with me to Psalm 18, verses 31 through 33. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. For who is God save the Lord? Or who is a rock save our God? It is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. And here is the text. He maketh my feet like hinds feet and setteth me up on my high places. So far, the reading and the hearing of God's word. I've been talking, I think this is the fourth sermon on feet. And it's so interesting that, that God says so much about feet in the scriptures. We talked about beautiful feet in a previous sermon. We talked about feet on assignment. We talked about set apart feet. And now today we're going to talk about Hind's feet for high places. Hind's feet for high places. Now, we, we all know, if you're, if you're familiar, if you are familiar with um, um, the scriptures, 
Many of us are familiar with the book of Psalms. Even if you're a new Christian, you know, or if you've never read the scriptures, the book of Psalms is really a wonderful way to be introduced to the, the, the Bible. You know, it's, it's not as difficult to understand as some of the other books. It's also a good place for devotional. And many, many people are into devotionals We're in all kinds of religions, in all kinds of spiritual experiences. There's always some place you go where you get a word or a phrase that helps you to get through the moment. Well, the Psalms can play a major part in your life because it talks about how the ancient people, uh, how they worship the Lord, what they said in their worship, how God responded to them, how they, they worship the Lord out of their pain, out of their disappointment. They weren't afraid of it. They worship the Lord for his goodness, for his kindness. They worship the Lord because of his, his promises. I mean, it just covers a whole gamut of the human experience. So the Psalms, the book of Psalms is a powerful book for us to get into to understand how to respond to God, that we can respond to God, that we can take him our fears, our anxieties, our pain, our disappointment, our frustration, our sins and our failures. And then we can also honor him for who he is. So if you're not familiar with the Psalms, just grab the Psalm, Psalm 23, just start there. And you begin to understand how great God is, how, how intimate he can be with you and help you to walk through this life. Well, what is Psalm 18 about? It really it corresponds with 2 Samuel 22. I mean, there were variations, but there, there's so many similarities. And there's no doubt the scholars say that this Psalm was written either about David or by David. And it talks about um, his, his experience going through his difficulty. And we know that David had several challenges in his life, even though he was called a man after God's own heart, even though he was chosen to be king of Israel, he was given this auspicious position, but in the midst of it all, there, there were challenges and persecutions, just like we're going today. The fallacy is if I love God and I serve God and I obey God, then everything will be okay. That's not what the scripture teaches. Even if I'm obedient and I trust the Lord, as a matter of fact, the more committed I am, it seems as if the more challenges will come at me. So if you've been told that, you know, when you work with the Lord and you serve him and you do what's right, then none of these things will come your way, then you've been bamboozled. If you read the scriptures, man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. We're living in it right now. The, 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 the righteous is going through this. The church is going through this. The world is going through this. The atheist is going through this. The agnostic, oh, come on. The pandemic is indiscriminate. You know, he's just not going around. It's not just going around picking on certain people, even though some of the, the, the um, statistics say that certain people, group of people have suffered more than others. But at the end of the day, everybody is suffering. Everybody's life has been compromised. So David is saying, I had my share of my personal pandemic. I have had my share of my troubles and my difficulties. And of course, it, it had to do with his trouble, even with Saul or with the other countries like the Philistines and all the countries he fought against. He also had troubles with his, trouble with his son. His own family turned against him and he had trouble with himself, how he forsook God and made some mistakes. So this man has a right to talk to us this morning. He's credible. He has a testimony. He can tell us what to do and what the Lord does for us, even in the midst of difficulty. Now, this scripture, I have read it many times, and I didn't, I didn't give it a lot of study, but I have read it. And from off the top, you know, I just said, oh boy, this is a wonderful scripture about promotion. It's a wonderful scripture about going high, going high, going high. And, and many of us, you know, there's nothing wrong with going high. There's nothing wrong with success. There's nothing wrong with accomplishment. There's nothing wrong with getting to the top of the mountain. But this is not what this scripture is all about. And, and right off the top, 
you know, I, I hope to God I didn't preach it like that. I, I'm, I didn't want to remember. But if I did, then I must apologize because that's not what it's saying. You know what I'm saying? It is talking about something so powerful and it is so applicable for this time. So the first thing is, the first point is he make it. He make it. I want to talk to you about, about three things. Um, he make it. That's that's number one. The, ne the next thing, he set it. And these ETH can really trip you up, but we'll get there. And the last thing is he settles. Three things. He make it. He, he, he set it. And he settles. Or he makes, he sets, and he settles. If the ETH is tripping up your tongue. All right? Okay. Now, the point one is he make it, which means that there's some feet adjustment. He has to make some adjustment in our feet. All right. The word make it means he, 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 he levels it or he makes it suitable or he brings adjustment. So the first thing I say to myself is that my feet need adjustment. I am not coming with suitable feet to get where God wants me to go. My feet are not suitable. When I came to the Lord, and feet here is not, it's figurative. I mean, the imagery you can see, but it really means my life, my walk, my journey, you know what I'm saying, my thought life, my response. That's what it's talking about. It's not suitable. So adjustment has to be made. And, and unfortunately, we don't like to think that we need adjusting or changing because we really feel like, you know, we, we, we came okay. As, as, as Pastor Brian said this morning, and even when he talked about his class on Friday night, we are totally depraved. Our feet are, our feet are crooked and broke up, as, 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 as um, Reverend Benita said. We have broke up feet. They're, they're, not, they're not fitted. They're not suited. You understand? So just, just realize what I brought to him was not suitable. So now he has to make major adjustment in which we call the sanctification process to make me suitable and equipped and skillful to go where he wants me to go. That's what the word make it. So um, Habakkuk 3 and 19 says, he will make my feet the same thing like hind's feet, and he will make me to walk upon mine high places. So we can see that this scripture is not that that psalm is not the only one that that talks about this. Second Samuel two and eighteen, and there were three sons of Zariah there: Joab and Abishai and As Asahiel. And Asahiel was a light uh, was light of foot as a wild roe. So here we see a description of what it takes to get where you're going. You're going to have to have light feet and, and feet that's swift and agile. Okay? So feet in the Bible, what, what does feet mean? It literally means your journey. It means your, 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 your walk, what you have to endure, where you're going, your, your destiny, your path. Okay? That's what feet here means. And then it says hinds feet. Why should my feet be adjusted to look like hinds feet? Why, 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 why would that comparative be made in terms of where I'm going or what I'm going through? Okay? My feet takes me through. I'm going through something, but I need hinds feet to go through or to get there. Hind's feet, you know, you know, hind is a female deer, you know, especially a red deer, okay? And, and the counterpart of the deer is called a stag, all right? Other species of deer may be called doe, and the male may be as a heart or a buck, okay? But the deer is really admired for its agility. Agility means swiftness, movement you know, being able to make adjustment and shift very quickly. It's grace moving, even though they're moving fast, they move with a certain grace, okay? It's ability to sense danger, uh, ability to, to make swift movements, especially when they are threatened, 
okay? They move with speed. That's why the hunters, many times, when they go after them, they move so quickly, they have, they have to use a net to catch them, all right? They, you know, the, their back feet were, 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 were almost like having a front feet. So it's like they have two front feet. That's how, that's how sure-footed, that's the other word. And if I had a subtitle, I would call you sure-footedness. The feet, the back feet and the front feet, they work together in such a, 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 a syn synchronism that, they, they, that they're sure-footed. Sure-footed means that they know how to place their feet in the right place at the right time. Sure-footedness means they know how to place their feet in the right place at the right time to make the right move. You understand? One foot is not dragging behind the other. They're not tripping over their feet. They don't trip. They're too, the, the feet are too sensitive and they move so well that they know how to support each other to get where the front feet and the back feet are fixed up and built up so that they can move together. Okay, they, they can climb impossible mountains. Okay, they can go to high places. Their hooves, their hooves are anatomically fixed up to grasp and to grab the terrain or the ground so that they can hold on and shift and not fall and trip and slide. They know how to chase, they know how to run, they know how to avoid danger and the muscles in their legs propel them. Come on, this is, I want you to get these, this imagery because that's what the writer is saying. That's what I want your feet to look like. That's the kind of movement and agility. That's the kind of swiftness. That's the kind of, of, of synchronization of your feet, meaning your thoughts, your, 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 um, your mind, your commitment, as, as, as Pastor Brian said, your covenant, your covenant should afford you this kind of feat, okay? The, the, the front leg serves as a pivot to make sharp turns. They walk, run, and jump on their third and fourth phalanges. They, this thing is so anatomically, their, their feet are anatomically set up to move, to, to have swift movement to have intelligent movement so that their lives will not be taken over. So, so what he's saying is, I'm making your feet so that you can navigate through all kinds of circumstances, so that you can make the right move at the right time. What is the meaning here? God has made the, 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 um, the deer alert or active enabling him to pursue an enemy or to escape an enemy. Here's what the feet of the hind is made up to do, either to pursue or to escape, all right? In First Chronicles 2 and 8, God's word says, and of the Gadites, they separated themselves unto David into the hold, to the wilderness, men of might, men of war fit for the battle, that could handle shield and buckler, whose faces were like the faces of lions and were as swift as the rose upon the mountains. Look, look, look at the preparation. The whole anatomy has been made up to deal with what God has called them to do. And so that's what this imagery is. These men were fit. And that's what God is doing this pandemic, whether you like it or not. He is making us fit. Lazy feet will now become feet like the high, okay? Feet that are not prepared to make movement. Feet that are not appear, prepared to give strength and agility. In this pandemic, many of us are learning how to make right choices at the right time because this high place is not a high place of success. It's a place that you can go to to avoid destruction. I'm taking you so you can know how to go through difficulty. The hind feet to get to the high place must encounter difficulty, must encounter in hindrances. The threat of death all around. People love deer meat. 
You, you're, they call it venison. You all know what venison is? Some of you from the South, you all live with shotgun and rifles, and you all know how you go out and you kill, kill these strange animals and eat them, all kinds of animals. Well, a lot of people like deer meat, and I've had venison, and it has a very wonderful taste. When So people are always after deers. They're always coming after deers. Hunters, people who hunt and live in, in many times in the country, they come after deers. The deers know that they are a target. It's the first thing. We don't know that we're a target. You see what I'm saying? That's why we are lazy and slothful and lax lackadaisical. Even in this COVID, we actually don't understand that in this COVID, you cannot be unsafe. You cannot just walk around as if there's not a reality of a COVID and that there's judgment in the land. You can't close your eyes. You've got to ask the Lord to make you swift and sharp and alert. That's why the whole year we've been talking about, we're a generation of watchers. Okay, so here it is. It's a figurative expression for, for strength acquired by God. God is making us like the deer or the deer's feet or the doe's feet. This is the Lord's doing. Now, now, now this making is not always comfortable. 99% of the time, because we think that there's nothing wrong with our feet. We don't think anything wrong with our feet, no. We think we can climb and do what we want to do based on our own ingenuity, our own skill, our own acumen, our own experience, our own networking. No, 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 no. The kind of trouble that we're in, this your feet can't do it. Whether it's big feet, small feet, twisted feet, corn feet, bunion feet, your feet cannot do this. God has to readjust your feet, which means readjust your path. Readjust your thinking, readjust your preferences, readjust the way you handle stuff, the way you walk, the way you deal, the way you go through. That's what he's doing so that you can be like the hind. You can be swift. You can be alert. You can be agile. You can know how to move away from the enemy's camp. Every time you get into a certain situation, you're able to shift and you're able to go higher. Okay, causing you to walk, causing you and me to walk on high places means a land. It means victory. High places means victory. High places means that God is going to give me the ability to go through this victoriously. This is not about hinds feet to get to the top of my game. This is hinds feet to get me through victoriously without being caught in a net. The hunters are out. <laughs> oh, hey God, hey, I feel a shift right here now, see? I, I, I know I wasn't all there, you know, when I first started, when I'm there now, you understand? The hunters are out and you know you're being hunted. You know what I'm saying? And you, you know what we're being hunted for, whether it's our faith, our emotions, our relationship, you are huntable if there's such a word. You're huntable. And, and you know there's certain there's certain things that, that will make you huntable. You know, you, you see a deer. You know, I have a lot of deers around where I live. And 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 you know, my 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 former attorney, Mr. Stewart, came here one day and he looked, he said, Oh my God, you have a lot of deer meat. I should get my I should get my gun right now and start shooting so I could have some deer meat for dinner immediately in his mind, the first thing he thinks about, shooting to kill to eat, kill to eat. And in this pandemic, the enemy wants to kill and eat us up. So don't sit back and think that, you know, you, 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 nothing is happening or whatever is happening, you know, it's not real or whatever. No, 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 no. You are, you are valuable to the kingdom of God. And that's why God is adjusting your feet so that you can come out of this or anything else victoriously. Isaiah 40 and 29, he give it power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. This has nothing to do with age. Young, young people are having just as much challenges 
as as older people, and they're fainting. The 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 um the, the percentage of suicide or or are, are just as strong in the younger as it is in the older. The young people are fainting and weary. We're weary. This thing is wearing us out. It's wearing us out, and many of you are worn out. Okay, and the young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I am making you so that you can go through this victoriously. I am adjusting your thinking. I'm adjusting your emotions. That's why you find it uncomfortable. I'm adjusting your relationship so that you can come out of this victoriously reflecting who I am. I'm making you swift and alert where you were asleep in certain areas of your life, where certain things would grab you and take you over because you just didn't see it. In this pandemic, I'm adjusting you so you could see and discern and be alert and not so be so easily bamboozled and gullible. The, 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 the deer knows, listen, and, and they know that they are uh, instinctively, they can sense danger. Not intellectually, instinctively. And what, what God is saying is, I'm making you so that you can see and hear danger. But the problem is we don't like to be made because we think that our feet are fine the way they are. But for those of us who knows we got crooked feet, it's not, it's not only broke up feet, we got crooked. Many of our feet are crooked. We're always in a crooked path. We always go in a crooked direction. We, we have a propensity for crookedness. Oh, I know I'm not talking to you because you know you're wonderful, but I know my feet can get crooked. I, I know it can turn a certain way and turn a certain way that, that, that it shouldn't be turning. That's why he has to make me. How does he make me? He puts me in situations to show me, first of all, that it's crooked because I don't believe it's crooked because I made that decision. You see, <laughs> as many of us, we don't ever want to admit that we fail. We don't want to ever admit that our choice was death. See, in order for my feet to be made like this, I've got to admit my feet need adjustment. And if that is not a repentant point in our spirit, we will not walk through any part of life victoriously. Because it takes a certain kind of, of, of feet for agility, for alertness, for movement, for swiftness, for strength, for courage to make it through victoriously. This, the next point is he said it. That means he sets, which means he establishes. All right. He said it. It literally means he, he establishes, he ordains, he places, he puts, he appoints. You see, this, this, is, this is God. Who, who made us, and he has a plan. I'm, I'm making your feet, and then I'm setting your feet. You don't tell me what's where you want to go. That's why we ain't going nowhere in, in this pandemic. We, we ain't going nowhere. The plane not going anywhere. The boat not going anywhere. The train hardly going somewhere. Ain't nobody going anywhere. Because you know why? We have always been telling God where we should go. We had appointments. Yes, we had plans. And many of those plans were not according to where God wanted our feet to go. He had to shut the whole world down to let us know that that's not where, that's not where my path is. I ain't never said that. You made that up. I, I never said it. That, that's your dream. Yes, that's your bucket list. Hey, glory to God, I felt that too. That's your, bu that's your bucket list. That you feel like if you don't do that before you die, you have never lived. I hear Christians saying that. If I don't get this now, 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 then, then what am I here for? What? That's why, you know, when, 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 um, when a foot is broken, <laughs> when a foot is broken or messed up and you go to the, to the doctor, what does he do? He has to reset it. 
You understand? And, and, and that's why it got broken. That's why it got broken because he, well, God, why did you allow that to happen? Why did you slam that door? Why did you let me do what I want to do? And that's why people are angry, 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 because he, the foot broke up. It broke. And God now has to reset it. You see what I'm saying? That's what the adjustment is because he has to reset it. Why is he reset it? To put it where it should go. To set it in motion of his path. You understand? And sometimes he let us go ahead. Go ahead with your bad self. You trying to climb the mountain and your feet ain't ready. You, you, you trying to do all that stuff and, 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 and be something and be somebody and go someplace and, 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 and you're not ready. You're not ready for, for the unexpected. You're not ready for, for, for the secret agendas. You're not ready for the strange people that's coming in your path because that's not the path he has for you. You're not ready. No, 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 no. You're going to be right in the, in the, in the path for the, for, for the hunter to hunt you down and shoot you out of here. Yeah. It's only when, that's why his mercy, I talked about mercy this morning. His mercy is he grabbed my feet. Now, I don't like it when you said it. I don't like it when you, some people have to have surgery to get that bone back in place. I don't like, it doesn't feel good. Why, why you can't let my feet stay the way it is? Why can't I, why can't I go in that path of my dream? Why, why, can't, why can't I fulfill my dream like Joseph? Then we get scriptural. Why, why can't I do that? Hmm? But if it, if, 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 it, if it weren't a problem with the Lord, he would not have broken it and, and reset it. See? He, he, he doesn't waste himself. If, if everything was fine, like he said to Cain, Pastor Robin, if you did well, what, 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 why would not accept your offering? I'm, I'm not capricious. <laughs> if you did what you were supposed to do, why, 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 am I, why am I throwing these things in your way? Why? Why? Because I've got to get your feet to the appointed place. There's an ordained, appointed situation. You don't want to go there. Your feet want to go somewhere else, but because your feet belong to the Lord, he doesn't trust you to set it. He sets it himself. We're not, we're not trustworthy in that kind of situation. He can't trust us to be so fully in agreement that we just show up with our feet and say, I'll, I'll go where you want me to go. I'm making up a song now. I'll do what you want me to do. Huh? We, we sing all those songs, then we, and then we have tears. But our feet, our mouth is saying one thing, but our feet is in another direction. You, you, you ever seen that? We are saying one thing with our mouth, but our feet, has been, our feet have been turned in another direction. So now you're a candidate for God to reset you. Call you, chose you. And he's not changing the path that he, that he has you on because you don't like the path. He's not going to readjust the path. He's not going to say east when he says west. He's not going to say north when he says south. He's not going to say south when he says north. Just because you like it and it's comfortable, it is an appointed it's an appointment. It's an ordained war. As Pastor Brian said, it's predestined. Listen to me. That's why we're unhappy. Get the book, I Hate My Life. I know I'm not supposed to say that right now because you'll think I'm just advertising, but get it anyway because the Lord gave it to me. I hate my life. You know why I hate my life? Because I hate where my feet, God's taking my feet somewhere and I don't want to go there. So he has to set it. He has to set it. You understand? It, it, it literally means he has to put it in its rightful position. He has to put it in its rightful position. And sitting there is not always comfortable. It's not comfortable. No, no, we, we, don't, we don't like it. We don't like it. We don't like it at all, okay? So, so we, we just have to, you know, settle in, settle in. It, it, it simply means that he's taking us, listen to this. This ordained place and this high place is a place of safety. 
The will of God, the purpose of God for my feet and yours is a place of safety and refuge. So what, right, right away, you don't, you don't have to speak in tongues to figure this out. If I, am, if I am ordained to go on a certain journey, the assurance is, number one, he's going to be with me. The assurance is, it's a place of safety and refuge. The assurance is, he's prepared. He said, even I'll make every crooked path straight. There's some promises and assurance that I have because my feet are set in the path. It's assurance. You understand? So the converse is also true. If I am resisting this, if I am, if I'm pulling my feet away, all right, and I want to do my own thing, there's no assurance there. There's no security there. That's not where the promise is. That's not where the favor of God is. That's not where he'll show up. Come on. He, he's, he ordains a path and he, he sets it in motion. That's why he has to go and rescue us from all these strange paths, these strange roads, these strange journeys that we are on to bring us back into the path that will bring him glory and that will further the gospel. Deuteronomy 32 and 13 says, he made him ride on the high places of the earth that he might eat the increase of the fields and that he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. It's a place of provision. It's a place of provision. When you're in the right place, I don't care if you're broke, nothing in your account. It is a place of provision. Deuteronomy 34, 29, happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people, saved by the Lord, thy shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy, thy excellency, and thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. It's a place of protection, a place of provision, and a place of protection. Psalm 27 and 5, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, he shall set me upon a rock and now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. A place of security, protection, provision, and security. Do you understand? When the Lord sets my feet in a certain path, it assures me of what? Protection, provision, and security. Okay? The last point, and I'm finished, is he not only makes my feet a certain way, he not only sets my feet a certain way, but he settles my feet a certain way. Okay? And what the settling? It, it, it's First Peter 5 and 10. But the God of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Do you know why many church people are unsettled and miserable? Do you know? First of all, look at the text. It's called suffering. Suffering settles you. You know, when you go through, you're not, you're not flighty. You, you know, flighty people haven't suffered enough. When you, when you suffer, flightiness go, go out the window. It goes out the window. When, 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 when you go through, there's, there's a quiet rest. You understand? There's a certain level of resolve and confidence. Suffering does that to you. And that's why many of us don't want to suffer. But you're missing out on the greatest place in the world in your Christian journey, which is a settling. It, it, it's a firm place. It's a solid place. The Bible said he plants my feet on a rock, a solid rock. You see, when you go through, you're not easily moved. You're shaken. Is, is, is that what Paul said? None of these move me. It doesn't mean he wasn't shaken. You can read the life of Paul. It doesn't mean that he didn't have his difficulties. 
He spent time in jail. He spent time on broken pieces of traveling to Rome. He, all of the stuff that he went through, he was scourged and whipped and locked up in maximum security. But there was a, all of that came to settle him, to settle him to say, I don't know why I have been chosen. I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere now. I don't know why I was apprehended. But, but I, I, I've been through enough to know that I'm forgetting those things which are behind. See, that's what suffering will do. Make you forget those things which are behind, reaching for those things which are ahead. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith. You see, that's what set, settling gives you clarity and focus. After you've been through, you, you allowed, you're allowing the Lord to make you. You're allowing the Lord to, 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 to put you in the right path. It, it, it may not be easy. There's some stones in the path and stumbling blocks, but he takes you. He gave you the ability to climb over it, to go around it, to, 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 to escape it, to come through it. And after you have that kind of rigorous training, <laughs> after you get through with that kind of experience, there's a settling in your spirit. What tantalizes others do not impress you. See? What flatters others don't flatter you. What others have to offer don't, can't offer. What other people are still looking for, still looking for, still, still, like, 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 like um, 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 Caesar said, said, said to Cassius, you got that, 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 that hungry look on you. You're still hungry. You understand? That hungry look, and people know when you're hungry, that's why they offer you the food. How come, that, how come they didn't offer it to Sally? Sally's sitting right there. Why they didn't offer Sally that food? Because Sally's not hungry. There's a settling. How come they tapped into you so easily? Because they know you ain't settled. You didn't get squeezed enough. You need one more squeezing. <laughs> talking to some, you just need one. After this squeezing, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine for a long time. <laughs> you just needed a... You just needed, a, there was a little bit of juice left up in there and, and God got to, that little bit of juice was getting ready to just contaminate all that he has done in all this time. It was getting ready to go, go systemic. He said, oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh, all right, all right, all right. Let me, let me, let me just do one more little squeeze in now because this needs to be settled. There needs to be a resolve. This ain't no resolve. This is a half. This is a record, three quarter resolve. And many of us are living on three-quarter results, and we just ride in high like we resolve. No, 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 no. Then why is he setting us up to make sure that we get settled? Settle this. Settle this. This is an unsettled area in your life. And I've got to take you through it, make your feet to go through it. You understand? Set you up to do it. So that you can be settled in what I want you to do. So I can be assured that five years from now, you'll be where I want you to be. You will not be looking for another ship. You understand? You, 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 won't, you won't be hungry. There will be that, that feeling of dissatisfaction and incompleteness. You know, don't know who I am. Don't know where I am. Don't know why I am. All of that, it takes a squeezing, ladies and gentlemen. But after the squeeze, take note, lift up your head. Don't, don't, don't hang your head down. Smile, smile now. Because after the squeezing, he said he's going to strengthen and settle. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. There's a settling. There's such, and the settling comes with a peace. And people think that you're so indifferent and, you, you know, you're not impressed. You're not, you know, no, no, no. You, you, when you squeeze enough, you, you, you ain't got no time to be jumping up with no whistle, no whistle and no flag. You, you, you go somewhere and say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the distance you brought me. That's what the old folks used to say. I thank you for the distance you brought me and the things you taught me. <laughs> oh, you know what that means? They settle up in it now. Nobody can move them and bribe them. Nobody can offer them something off their path. They're settled in it. That means that now we are available to the kingdom of God. That means that God can count on us. That means that there is a level of loyalty. God, you help my soul today. There's a level of commitment 
that you understand the arrangement that he has made and you're in agreement with it. Because you see, you got scars on your feet. See, he had to break it up a couple of times and reset it and reset it again. You understand? And now, now there's, a, there's an awareness. There's, a, there's an understanding that, that, that some trust in horses and some are still riding in chariots. Ah, but I remember the name of the Lord. Itabo, shake your so bye-bye. You understand what that means? It means that, come on, there's nothing that you can offer me that can compare with what God has done. My God, he has worked his work, scrubbed his scrub, and it ain't over. It ain't over. No. When Paul got down to the end of his life, this is what he said. Oh, that I might know him. Paul, you didn't have enough? You didn't have enough. You mean you tell me you're still looking for more? Oh, that I might know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his suffering. <laughs> you mean you didn't have enough, Paul? You, 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 you weren't in enough prison? You weren't hated enough and talked about enough, even by the church people that you preached out? You want more? You want more? You want more slander? <laughs> Be made conformable unto his death. God, you help me right here. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, there's a certain level of settling that we're avoiding. Because, you know, some of us are easily, you know, we, we, we get tired quickly. You know, we, we, need, we, we only like short term. We don't like long haul. We like short term because we, we like to get the reward quick. If, it ain't, if, it, if I'm not getting the affirmation quick, then I can't, and then suddenly the project is half done. See, you know, it, it's, it's, it, it's done and then it's not coming out the way I want it. So I'm gonna slip to another project. What? Huh? No, 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 no. There's a certain thing called perseverance. Race is not given to the swift. See, that's what the settling does. Not the battle to the strong, but it's for those who can take the long haul. See, that's that, that's the long haul. That's the long haul. So what 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 does these words mean that he will make you perfect in that first Peter? You know, he'll make he'll make you complete, like 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 joints. He, he's repairing you. He'll make sure that the joints are put in the right place and anything that's dislocated you input dislocation you mad at somebody because somebody didn't do something to you you dislocated you holding 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 stuff how can god use you with all that holding stuff inside of you huh over nothing a piece of bread huh oh over something something simple you that's why he got to squeeze you again you ain't squeezing up no 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 you, you, you ain't been in no prison. Ain't nobody whipped your back and opened it up and put some sore, big sores up in it. Nobody put you in a dark dungeon where there's no light, where you can get TB and all kind of disease. Ain't, ain't nobody doing that to you? And over some stuff? Come on, ladies and gentlemen. This is why the squeeze is on. This is why the pandemic comes so hard at the church. We have created an institution that is anti the process of what God wants to do in his people to make them formidable, to make them strong, to make them available, to make them useful. We robbed the church of that. All we did was cater to people's preferences, their intelligence, their, their, their creativity, their, their, their skills, but never to their character. And as a result, their feet are crooked, doing great things for God. Feet are crooked, exegeting the text. Feet are crooked. Somebody said, well, not everybody's perfect. No, 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 no. I'm not suggesting that. Don't twist my words. What I'm saying, what the text is, he wants to make the feet. We run away from the making. We run away from the settling. We run away. But what God is saying that I have to take you through so that I can settle you and establish you. Establish here means make you firm in every part. Adapt you strongly to each other, not just your feet, but adapt you so that you can connect with all the people in the church. That's the thing right there. That's the disconnect. We don't mind having strong feet. 
to climb to our high place. We don't mind having feet that feel a moaning coming so we could get to the top of our mountain. But we don't want to connect with Susie Mae's feet because we don't think her feet is all that great. It's below you. <laughs> when your feet just as crooked as everybody else, you understand? You see, this one thing about God, he's, he's not saying one foot is better than the other. He said everybody foot crooked. Everybody, 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 everybody. <laughs> and everybody got to have this adjustment called sanctification so that we can at least walk together, walk together. And he wants to strengthen you so that you will be able to endure danger, get through danger, and you won't fall so easily. And then the last word is settled. And settled means to make you sure, to make you complete in your mind, to make you be able to go through difficulties and trials that you will resist the enemy and overcome difficulty, that you will be abide, that you will abide firmly in the truth of grace. That here is a key word. You'll be sure-footed. You know what that means? Sure-footed means that your foot will be in the right place at the right time. You won't be coming up missing or tired. Or cute excuse. No, no, no. Sure-footed means I, I, I'm, I'm, right, I'm right where I'm supposed to be for the glory of God. Not for the glory of man. For the glory of God. And when I talk about church now, I'm talking about the will of God, the path that God has called you. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not going high without going through. You hear what I'm saying? <laughs> we ain't going high without going through. We, 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 we don't like to say things like that. We're not going high until we go through. Me right now, there's a little something coming. We are not going, stop lying to yourself. Somebody's been bamboozling their own mind, and you do it so you won't go in the crazy house. Well, hear this you're going in the crazy house if you don't believe that you are not going high until you go through, and you're not getting settled until you go through. And the settling is not to make you just sit down and plop down and be fat and secure. It's settling so that you're firm. So that if he calls you in the midnight hour, you're not out on some kind of transactional, transactional relationship. Thank you, Pastor Brian, because I'm going to use it. You're not out making new transactions to climb to your high place. That's why you're miserable. You're settling into the covenant relationship. Wherever I am, I've learned how to be content. I know how to abase and I know how to abound. Hey, my soul. I know how to die and I know how to live. Know how to give and I know how to get. Know how to endure insults and keep on moving. See, now, now, now the Lord can drop some big stuff on you now because you know, he knows you're not going to quit under pressure. He knows that you'll be hanging in there, that you're not easily flattered. Somebody flatter you, make you think, oh, you're special because, you know, I, we can work together because, you, you, you know, um, um, because you, 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 you can understand what, what I'm going. And I like to hang out with certain people, you know, and, and, and whatever. And we get flattered. Oh, I'm in a special group. I'm, I'm in an intellectual group. You know, huh? You're, you're foolish. You're foolish. This has nothing to do with intellectualism. It has to do with God making us what he wants us to be, to go through what we have to go through so that we can be of use to him. You're too, you're too gullible, you're too hungry. So that's why, that's why he's gonna squeeze you. Making my feet like hinds feet, adaptable. Setting my feet in the right path, positional. Settling my feet so that I can be useful. That's what that scripture is talking about. Now go study it yourself. Get all your blue letter and, and all this stuff that you use and see if you come up with something else. But that's basically what it's saying. 
It's talking about David being able to ride through all those difficulties and still become king. Living in foxholes and caves. That's why he can write that. He can write that. Because he knows what it is to be narrow places and how God gave him the ability to navigate and still end up where he was supposed to be, was to be a king after God's own heart. I thank God that he's doing something with my feet. I don't know what you're thanking him for. You know, maybe you're thanking him for another kind of feet. But I, I, I thank God. And whenever I try to do something else, I have scars of how he shifted my feet, reset my feet, and prayerfully, prayerfully, what he's doing in my life, I'm of some use to him. Prayerfully, after all that I'm going through and have been through, that there's some, there's some ability, some skill that he has given me to make me available for his glory even if it doesn't look glorious. Honey, <laughs> and so, here we are, and so, I don't know what your prayer is, and, and, and I can't pray for you. You have to pray your own prayer right here. But what he's saying is, I'm going to do the making, I'm going to do the setting, and I'm going to do the settling. It's non-negotiable. Whether you accept this message or not, it's about you and God. He is going to get your feet even if it's one minute before you leave here, you're going to be in agreement with the path that he has chosen. So it, 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 it ain't, no, it's not, ain't nobody trying to fix you or, or call you and remind you. No, no, no. The scripture, the scripture is clear. He's going to do it. Not the pastor, not the bishop. All the bishop is supposed to do is go to Psalm 1833. And then it's between you and the Lord right now. Just to remind you, your feet are in his hands. So take another trip here. We'll take another trip. He knows how to meet you on trips. Because he wants your feet to be positioned. Not where I wish to be. Nor where I wish to go. But who am I that I should choose my way? The Lord will choose for me. It's better far I know whether I go or stay. Take another look at your feet this morning. God has a plan for your victory and for your passage. It's a journey that he has carved out before the foundation of the world. It's non-negotiable as what he ordains must come to pass. Lord, we thank you, we thank you. We are not sad about this. We are going to be uncomfortable and we are going to have moments when we would prefer not to be, not to do, not to go. But thank God you know how to ignore all of that and take us in the path that you have provided for us. Or you said the path of the justice is a shining light. Let's shine it more and more until the perfect day. Until the perfect day. In Jesus' name. For those of you out there in, in social media, let me just say to you, if you don't know what to do with your feet, if you're concerned about this pandemic and where you are and who you are and what to do, so many things. It's time to vote, time to vote. Everybody should vote. But so many of us are confused as to what to do in our voting decisions. So many things are coming at us. The main thing to realize is that God has a path for your life. And you have to trust him that he will make you adaptable for your service to him. He will make you suitable, prepared. He will equip you. That's what's happening right now. If you want to turn your life over to the Lord so that you can be equipped to come out of this victorious, just pray this prayer. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. You said in your word. You said in your word that if I that if I confess with my mouth confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart and believe in my heart that God that God raised Jesus raised Jesus from the dead from the dead 
I shall be saved. I shall be saved. And right now. And right now. I confess you. I confess you. As my Lord. As my Lord. And I believe. And I believe. That you're alive. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. I've offended you, but you accepted me. I've offended you, but you've accepted me. And I thank you. And I thank you. That right now. That right now. I'm legitimately. I'm legitimately. A child of God. A child of God. Lord, I thank you for whoever made that prayer. Wherever they are at whatever time. That's your child. And you you, you set aside this day to legitimately bring them into the kingdom. And I thank you that you're going to take them through. You're going to make their feet like Heinz feet in Jesus' name. If this message has blessed you, if this message helped you out there on Facebook and YouTube, just put something in the chat or let us know because God is concerned about your feet. God bless. On behalf of Bishop Jacqueline E. McCullough and the Beth Rafa family, thank you for joining our live stream service. Visit us online at BethRafa.org where you can submit your prayer requests, give into the work of the ministry, and connect with our church family via social media. God bless you richly, and we look forward to you joining us again.